Now, Jim, I want to get into what's happening in the Middle East. I know you're an expert on it. You've written the New York Times bestseller, Rise of the Fourth Reich, uh, which gets into the Muslim Brotherhood that you wrote, what, three, four years ago. You've got a new book out as well. I want to get into Snowden, what's currently happening. Do you agree with me? There's a big awakening happening. I want to talk about that. And then next hour, we're going to get into some of the big conferences you've been going to as a journalist, the real alternative energy from the bull that's out there. This is very exciting and could just produce unlimited wealth, basically, for the average person and revolutionize our future and real prosperity. So uh, we're going to be talking about that some and then segueing into phone calls in the next hour, second hour. But Jim Mars is an award-winning journalist and author. After graduating from the University of North Texas with a degree in journalism, Mars worked for uh, and owned several Texas newspapers before becoming independent journalist uh, author. He's also been uh, a professor of history, and he's just done so much more. He's written a whole bunch of New York Times bestsellers, uh, and his book was turned into JFK, the film with uh, Oliver Stone, Crossfire, the plot that killed Kennedy, the basis for the Oliver Stone film, and I'm not going to say any more, jimmars.com. Jim, we've got about six, seven minutes before we go to break and start the next hour. Uh, you were chomping at the bit out there in the green room <laughs> to talk about the fact that I mean, we were showing the videos. I, I, I know you could see it in the green room. These are Al-Qaeda flags, guys with big beards, throwing women and children and men, be, beheading them. There's a whole bunch of videos. And our media keeps saying they don't know who's doing it. When they've got their flags and our government and NATO is backing Al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood, what is really behind that? Well, uh, I think they can't admit that it's actually uh, Al-Qaeda because we have been conditioned and programmed and propagandized against Al-Qaeda since long before 9-11. Uh, and, of course, 9-11, it was Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda. They're our big enemies. That's why we had to invade all these countries over in the Middle East. But I want to give a brief history lesson here, okay? Let's go back to the 1930s and the uh, Muslim Iman who founded the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, he was enamored of a fella in Europe who had a big uh, national socialist movement going on named Adolf Hitler. That was the Imam of Jerusalem and the Imam of Turkey. Mm -hmm. Two and of so them. So he, he wrote to Adolf Hitler and Adolf Hitler wrote him back. And decided, hey, here's a chance, uh, here's an opportunity to get our foot in the Middle East. So uh, by the time of World Muslim Brotherhood invited them to invade. Yeah. Well, by the time of World War II, the Muslim Brotherhood was a Nazi organization. All right. And uh, during World War II, when we were fighting in North Africa, we had about as much trouble with the uh, Muslim Brotherhood Arabs as we did with the Nazi troops uh, in the Africa Corps. Okay. After the war, and the more we won the war, well, British then took over North Africa, but they were war-weary. They had plenty on their hands, so they turned uh, the Muslim Brotherhood over to the CIA, all right? So people... Who's really a, a skull and bones globalist branch. Exactly. They were the Eastern establishment. And not really Americans. Not truly. Now, you have to understand then that the CIA has run uh, Al-Qaeda since... After World War II, all right. Now Al Qaeda, then uh, that name came up on record. On this is all on record. This is all well documented. Uh, Osama bin Laden, who was a Saudi, uh, then gets uh, he's brought to this country under the name Tim Osman. That's and declassified. This is not our opinion. This is this is not conspiracy theory. This is all fact. He's armed, trained by the United States, and sent to Afghanistan to form the Mujahideen. Okay, that was with our, General Hamid Ghul that we've had on. Right. He's and, confirmed all that. And then so we were supporting them against the Russians as our proxies in Afghanistan. Now, uh, after, during Afghanistan and after Afghanistan, uh, everybody knew that the Muslim Brotherhood had a bad reputation because they'd been this Nazi organization. So Osama bin Laden uh, took his hardcore group and they changed the name to Al-Qaeda which, by the way, literally means the base. Now, I, early on, I thought, well, that must mean their headquarters somewhere, right? Uh-uh, no, Alex. Uh, the uh, MP and... Um, they killed him a week after. 
Uh, it, Robin Cook, a week after he went public and said, <laughs> that's the name of the CIA database. Yes. Oh, he he said it's the database that the CIA keeps of Arab Muslim uh, operatives that they can, of course, call up and get them to do anything they want them to do. So it's really, really important for, uh, for your listeners uh, to share the information that when they hear Al-Qaeda, they hear CIA. That's who's been right. al cia -da. Yeah, I'll see I ate it. That's exactly and, right. And now they're running them in Libya, running them in Syria, and now they're running them against the army of Egypt. And our government for the first few days was saying the army was wrong. The truth is Morrissey turned the country over to Al-Qaeda, not just Muslim Brotherhood, to right. just run around slaughtering people. Why is Obama funding groups that are killing Christians in Egypt? Well, and we see the same thing happening in Syria. Now, I'm not trying to say the, that the government in Syria is a wonderful... No, but they didn't government. start this. They and didn't start it, and they're not killing the Christians. It's the rebels killing the Christians and killing the Jews, and we're funding them, and we're giving them the arms. It's incredible, folks. You have no idea what's going on in your name and with your tax money. Man, I tell you, who do you think Obama really is? Because... Uh, 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 He's a Muslim socialist, period, end of story. I mean, he himself yeah. said so, you know. Yeah, and, and, but I used to think that was just like a CIA cover. Yeah. I think their, I think their mag should be an Illuminati double cross here. Well, the, the thing is... Napoleon teamed up with these guys for a while. Well, that's it. In in high level politics, you know, the alliances form and then break apart and form again. And, and when you get to that level, it's just whoever can benefit you. Well, here's my point. I don't want TSA acting like I'm a terrorist to look for bin Laden in my underwear or in my wife's brassiere when we all know this is a fraud. Is so that? now when I get there and they act like I've done something wrong, I go, look, you all know the government runs Al-Qaeda. And then when the customs says, do you have drugs? I go, no. You know the government ships them in. And two levels of customs went, yeah, we know that. To me at the airport at Dallas. It's like everyone knows this. It's like, leave me alone. I'm not part of your murdering New World Order. I've got, Stop acting like I'm guilty. I've got a bumper sticker you'd love. It says, dare to get the CIA off drugs. Absolutely. <laughs> or, or, or Ron Paul's favorite sticker on his desk for 40 years. Uh, don't steal. The government hates competition. That's exactly right. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. 
No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices. We bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> Jim, let me ask you this question in this brief segment we've got. A, do you think there's a mass awakening happening? And B, how big is it? And C, did the system overplay its hand where it's in the mainstream news, the government launders most of the drug money and that brings the drugs in, and that private banks get the profit, and that private groups are using the NSA to spy on their enemies and blackmail people, and that the government really runs Al-Qaeda? And I mean, everything we've talked about is now being proven correct, and they can't even kill Jim Mars or Alex Jones. I've figured that out. They could kill us. They yeah. still might, but it won't do anything because it's the message is out there. It's like we're just people that see the obvious. We're nothing special. Yeah, it's really amazing. No, and I totally agree with you. I think there is a huge mass consciousness raising going on. Uh, you, number one, though, most people think that they're isolated because they don't hear any of this in the mainstream corporate media, all right? It, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, about a month ago, there were 53 cities in this country that had massive demonstrations against the uh, genetically modified organisms of Monsanto. No coverage. And there was no coverage. That's not news, folks. That's not journalism. That is propaganda and suppression of the news. But they get news from you. They get news off the Internet. There's all kinds of people out there. Yes, the consciousness is rising. Uh, but the problem is, number one, most people think that they're the only ones because they don't hear their views and the information parroted in the uh, or mirrored in the uh, mainstream mass media. And the second thing is, is they're kind of like the deer caught in the headlights. They know something's wrong. They know something's bad. They know there's a lot of stuff going on, but they just, it's, what do we do about it? What do we do about it? Because And it, it's a good question. It's a valid question because do you go vote? No, they control the vote through the voting machines. They skew the numbers. You know, almost every major vote in the last few years has always been 48 to 52, 51 to 49. It's always just within a few short That is things. extremely astute what you said, and I'm not just like being patronizing here, because that's what I've, the realization I've come to myself deeply thinking on this. Most people know they're in trouble. Most people are aware something's going on, but they're never given validation by the dinosaur media that still doesn't have that many viewers or readers, but people still think it's authoritative. Even if they don't trust it, they don't see it agreeing, so they still feel small. They don't understand that if they're a Jim Mars or Alex Jones, people recognize and come up to you. Then you realize how many people are awake. It's incredible. It, it absolutely is, and I travel a lot, and uh, East Coast, West Coast, all around, you know, through the Central uh, Midwest, and 
there's just people everywhere. But they think they're isolated because they never see those views reflected in the corporate mass media. And then even if they do, you, you answer the question with second part, what do you do? So I, so I want to talk with you about some solutions when we come back in general. And then the big solution, I, I just see so many cons out there. I know there's a lot of real stuff, but then there's also cons using it to make money with oh, free energy, perpetual motion machines. But there's real stuff with hydrogen and other things that really are the answer to everything. Right. Uh, because if we have enough wealth and enough energy and end artificial scarcity, it's over. I want to see that happen. And you've been doing some deep research. Absolutely. You mentioned hydrogen. Just stop and think about this. What is the most plentiful element in the world? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Why is that? Because the world is predominantly water. And what's water? H2O, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. There's more hydrogen than there is Well, that's oxygen. why in the film, which is based on you know science, um, that, that uh, you said last night you haven't seen that you should go see, uh, the uh, one with uh, Tom Cruise that just came out, Oblivion, that's what the ships there taking away is our water for that, for a hydrogen jump. But, but stay there. We're going to get into real science with the one, the only, Jim Marr, straight ahead. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. Toll free number to join us. Your specific questions for best-selling author Jim Mars that's in studio with us. The toll free number to get involved on this live July 7th Sunday transmission is 877-789-ALEX. 877-789-2539. Your call's coming up at the bottom of the hour. Well, joining us from uh, the countryside outside DFW is Jim Mars, now in studio with us. JimMars.com is another New York Times uh, top 10 bestseller. Uh, and he joins us right now. But you've been involved with some of the bigwigs who are really looking into the real alternative energy, not free energy, not magic stuff. There's a lot of cons out there. And also people that have built things that uh, are real, but there's not a real way to extract it. They're impractical. I've made a real study of alternative energy. And it is the big kahuna because energy is power. The Federal Reserve puts out fake dollars. It's not really Federal Reserve uh, the Federal Reserve notes are not really dollars. They're Federal Reserve notes. But with those symbols of energy, they can get the world. So they kind of have a perpetual motion machine. While they try to create artificial scarcity, that's why Obama, in fact, let's cue that clip up from last week, told Africans, you can't have air conditioning. You can't have a car. You can't have a good life. That's bad for the earth. While the GMO is destroying the planet, while the globalists are blocking the clean alternative energies and putting out fake windmills to so their select buddies and Solyndra, not even building the complexes. Meanwhile, there are real solutions in energy, and you have been doing research into this. This is mainline technology around for a long time that's ready to be deployed right now. But as you told me last night, and I've seen this in the news, any company that tries to really put this out, the directors commit suicide. They get arkansided uh, very, 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 very quickly. They fall down and hit their head or, or uh, you know, uh, go uh, close the garage door and turn on the car. Jim Mars, break down the, the, the true cutting edge and what could revolutionize everything. People want solutions. Here it is. Okay, well, let's, uh, let, let, this goes all the way back. Let's go back to the turn of the 20th century and Rudolph Diesel uh, invented a diesel engine that he originally uh, designed to run on organic matter, okay? <laughs> you remember the uh, Back to the Future movie, and they put banana peels and, and I don't know, coffee grounds and stuff in the little uh, fusion thing to, to run the time machine. He built a diesel to run on organic matter, but that would have interfered with the petroleum-based industry. So what happened to Rudolph Diesel? Gee, it was terrible. He fell overboard crossing the English Channel. Too bad. Now, and that goes all the way back. I could, we don't have the time, but I could sit here and give you at least a dozen examples, some of which I had direct personal experience The FBI with. on record raided Tesla's laboratory. Oh, yeah, Tesla. 
You know, he he's they burned his laboratory down. There's there's things going on right now today. Some years back, there was a kid up in the northwest who said, "I've got a I've developed a carburetor that'll get a hundred miles on one gallon of gas." And he got reporters. He drove them a hundred miles. They checked it out. They've made sure there wasn't any some trick to it. It was legit. What happened to that? It's gone again. By I, the way, I, I've seen magazines in the '60s and stuff. General Motors and Ford. With carburetors with 75 miles to the gallon, cars yeah. that go 150 miles an hour. And you tell me the Japanese today can't do that? Well, the Germans are making a Volkswagen over in Europe right now that's getting 56, 60 miles to the gallon. But you can't buy it in the United States, okay? And why is that? Okay, because the elite, the very people you're always preaching about, these people have a monopoly based on petroleum. All right? It's that simple. And anything that comes up that's going to threaten that they buy it up if they don't buy it up then they then they just find and they're going to try to use on record the shortage of it in the next 50 years because they're going to artificially make it scarce to take control of the entire human civilization and that is wrong well most people truly believe today that the reason we fought in iraq afghanistan syria all these countries and Egypt is because we're trying to get their oil. Well, we don't need oil. We don't need well, oil. Well, Leslie Clark declassified that actually illegally. I mean, he admitted he was in the Pentagon and saw the plan to not let those countries sell the oil to create artificial scarcity. Saddam's crime was over pumping. Exactly. In fact, see, people don't realize that. I hear people all the time say, well, we invaded Iraq because we wouldn't steal their oil. Let me tell you something, folks. We were only getting 16% of our imported oil from Iraq prior to our invasion. And once we invaded, then they set some of the oil fields on fire. There was fighting going on. We didn't even get that much. They cut down the amount of oil we were getting from Iraq. People wake don't up. get artificial scarcity. No, nah, wake up. The oil companies are capping oil fields all over the U.S. The biggest oil, oil reserve in the United States is, and if anybody remembers their history, which they don't, you may recall that the biggest scandal early in the 20th century was the Teapot Dome scandal. That's where the government was selling off drilling rights to the naval oil reserves out in California, Teapot Dome, and it caused a huge scandal. And, you know, those fields have still not been... And guess who controls that today? <laughs> Al Gore, Mr. Uh -huh. Anti-Oil, Occidental Petroleum. Mr. Carbon Tax Man. You know, he He's one of the biggest there. oil men in the world. Now, now let's expand on this. Because actually, big oil is actually what's financing the carbon tax to shut down coal, their competition, <laughs> which would make energy cheap again. Right. Right, exactly. And then all they can talk about is nuclear power. It's so safe and efficient that... Which is another insider deal that's horrible. And we're about to kill ourselves. The Pacific is getting irradiated. They're telling you don't eat fish. 91% of reactors Asian. are leaking worldwide. But I, I mean, let's get into that. Talk about hydrogen alone. Yeah. Get into solutions. Hydrogen is the way to go. Uh, I met a fellow here just the other day uh, who uh, had been an engineer, and he lives in New Jersey, out in the, kind of the countryside. And he uh, his he runs his cars, his air conditioning, his home, his heating, his lawnmower on hydrogen. All right, and when Hurricane Sandy hit. And all of his neighbors, their power went out for like a month or more. And they were in desperate need. Can you imagine no power for a month or a month and a half? And that's not off record. You were hanging out with the crows, right? They're, they're, they're researching this. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and he was telling, it was a great story because all his neighbors, he, he was a bright light, so to speak, in the middle of the darkness because his lights were on and everything was operating. And his neighbors would come to his house and to take a shower and to, uh, and to juice up their batteries for the. And this is on record. Uh, so the most plentiful uh, free element uh, you know, out there is hydrogen, uh, this, yeah. this, this, this gas. Explain to people how this works. Well, you, you can take a, 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 here's what's amazing about hydrogen and, and why I don't understand, well, I do because they're greedy bastards, but I mean, the, I don't understand why we're not shifting to a hydrogen economy because, as I understand it, you can take 
all of the normal infrastructure, the pipelines, the pumping stations, the refineries, the, your car, you get an adjustment. Yeah, they're even going to make the money off of it, but they still yeah. don't want us to have it. Yeah, exactly. And, and we were with a top engineer last night. He can agree with you on yes, this. Yes, with a little tweaking, it could all run on hydrogen. Hello, there you go. The, but why not? Why don't we not get that? Because it's the most plentiful substance in the world, and they cannot get a monopoly over it. Well, that's like diamonds are really semi-precious, but they're geographically uh, restricted so they can create artificial scarcity again. Right. And they have tight control over that. The fastest way to get killed in Africa is to go out and find a diamond, you know, outside of the normal uh, chain. Yeah, they call those blood diamonds and demonize anybody trying to get money for Africa. Exactly. When really it's the... So I want to come back with more solutions, other alternative energy things, and talk about like you did yesterday, the, you know, the, the machines you saw. All you do is put water into this thing. And then it separates it all out, and, and just incredible. Right. It's as close as a perpetual motion machine as you can get. Jim Mars is our guest, and your phone calls are coming up as well. Your specific questions for our guest. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. 
I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the New World Order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team. Jim, you are just going a mile a minute off air about, uh, as an investigator, as a journalist, all of these alter alternate energies. And again, we were having dinner last night with a very well-known engineer who's worked in the Apollo program, but after that in petroleum engineering. You, know, you name it, he's done it. And he was absolutely. And the fact that they knew 30 years ago they could have the streets be solar glass and power everything off that. I mean, they are sub just like they had light bulbs, famous light bulbs in San Francisco, but there's one in Dallas, too, or is it? Uh, I remember hearing about when I was a kid at the fire station that was like 80 years old. Now it must be 100. There was one at the Palace Theater that uh, has, it was burning uh, until they finally tore it down. Uh, it had been burning since 1895 uh, yeah, so, or so something So light like bulbs that. that go for 100 years, mm -hmm. why do they burn out fast now? It's planned obsolescence. Mm -hmm. That's admitted. The public doesn't know that. Everything's gamed, so 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 get into it. Solar, all of it. Uh, well, it's all mindset. Uh, there is no problem with technology. I'm here to tell you, just with absolutely no fear of contradiction, that uh, there is off-the-shelf technology that can solve all of our energy problems overnight. It, it's not so. It's not technology. It's the mental thing. Now, here's a classic example about. 30 years ago, I was inter uh, interviewing an energy expert, and I'd gotten real fired up on solar energy, and I said, well, you know, what about solar energy? You know, we draw uh, energy from the sun. If sun burns out, we're all in trouble anyway. And he goes, well, that's really a good idea. He says, but, but that's 20 years in the future. Okay, hey, folks, it's 20 years. Here we are, and we still don't have it. Why? Because, listen, here is the problem in their thinking, in their training, in their conditioning. He said, do you realize it would take solar panels covering the entire state of Arizona to provide enough electricity to power the city of Los Angeles? And I went, oh, whoa, yeah, I guess so. Well, I went off and I thought about that, and, and you know, he's right. But where's the flaw in his thinking? Central generation. He can only think in terms of generating enough electricity centrally and then piping it to L.A. Where you lose well, most of it. Yeah, and you lose most of it in the transmission. Same thing with the uh, with with wind farms far away. It works to have it at your house, right? Like the old windmill, but but not uh, 500 miles away. So well, so what if everybody in Los Angeles puts solar panels on their roof? Whoa, then you power the city of Los Angeles and everybody's got their own power. And why don't we have that? Because they hadn't figured out how to make a cloud come and hang over your house if you don't pay your electric bill. Absolutely. Monopoly. Well, Monopoly. it's also come out in the news that if you try to hook it up on your house yourself off the grid, they won't come inspect it. They won't authorize in most cities. But if you, but they'll, they'll subsidize it and pay for part of it with taxpayer money if you hook it up and let them run it and it feeds the grid. Right. Well, now, that's an interesting thing, too. And I've lived through all this and watched it happen. When it first came out about people, uh, whether it's solar, wind generation, whatever, providing their own juice, the power companies were all opposed to it, okay? and But then it came in anyway, and then they passed laws saying if you are producing individually uh, enough juice that you can put it back into the power system, they have to buy it back from you, okay? Now, you'd think, ooh, wait a minute. Sounds good, but it means you get an inspection. Now they're running you. Well, number one, they can come on your property. They come yeah. and inspect you. But here's the thing. Now they're all for it because under the law, yes, they have to buy back your excess electricity, but they get to buy it back at a cheaper price than what they're paying normally. And then some people, exactly, exactly, 
so it's creating a monopoly for them again of yeah. a lower price. But people they're say, but they're making money on it, so it's okay. Exactly, but the people say, well, aren't you for Obama then? He's giving tens of billions of taxpayer money a year to this. So did Spain. It bankrupted him. It's given to select insiders. He, he who, gave it to his buddies, and they went broke. They don't even <laughs> open a building up. They just take the money and run. Exactly. Or they build windmills 500 miles away on record that break and don't even work and kill the birds. And That's because chances are, if you looked way in, into their portfolio, you'd find that actually they're heavily invested in oil and gas. Well, no, it turns out you're right. You know, again, BP. <laughs> is the biggest funder of all this and the biggest funder of carbon taxes. Right. They're the group that gives most of the money to fund Bilderberg as a charity. Look it up. Okay, but you, you mentioned BP. BP is yeah. running the clean energy movement so they can kill it. Exactly, and I just ran into some wonderful folks from California who had been getting some help, quote, help from Shell to develop hydrogen, all right? And then it, it finally, they finally realized that they weren't getting anywhere. Shell, that's Dutch oil. That's Queen uh, Beatrix. Uh, Beatrix of Holland. They don't want. They don't want that. It's a public relations move. She owns that company. And they they weren't doing it. In fact, in anything, they were throwing uh, you know roadblocks. They the are oh, not just that it. company, but on record, they the federal regulators. It's the same in Europe. Will go to anybody and go. You got a nice company here. What it's worth? Ten million dollars. Here's here's five hundred million. Sign it over to us, and they shut it down, and then say, look, we're green. Yeah, exactly. Well, do we have that Obama clip real quick? We're going to we're going to play this clip because again, he's telling Africans you can't have progress unless we have clean energy. Meanwhile, he's blocking it all while claiming he funds it all. This is the incredible brainwashing. Here's the clip. The youth that everybody's mentioned here in Africa, if everybody's raising living standards to the point where everybody's got a car and everybody's got air conditioning and everybody's got a big house, uh, well, the planet will boil over unless we find new ways of producing energy. Now, now expanding on that whitehouse.gov clip, the problem is warming happens in all the major studies. They had to admit this now, and then carbon dioxide goes up, and now NASA admits it's a cooling gas, and it's a trace gas. So it, it's a total red herring. Give up, you know, Let us run the energy system and decide what you can have, or it'll burn the earth up. Right. Well, well, what they claim is is that it's the carbon emissions that are uh, causing greenhouse effect and then heating up the, the planet, okay? So, well, if we go to hydrogen, it doesn't heat up. It, if it puts out any excess at all, it's oxygen and, and uh, you know, clear water. Which is something we need. Yeah. And How by horrible. The way, by the way, listen, people, listen carefully to this. It is not global warming. It is solar system warming. The ice caps on Mars are diminishing, which means they're melting. The ice. Uh, on, uh, the UN voted and said the sun doesn't affect temperature. The, yeah, but the ice on some of the moons of Jupiter are is melting. But I'm being sarcastic. I mean, they voted and said the sun doesn't affect us. The sun is everything. Well, they used to tell us the world was flat. <laughs> but I mean, how dumb do they think we are? The sun is the main driver of climate. Well, they think we're pretty dumb if all we do is watch mainstream media. I agree. Now, now. Let me throw this out, and we're going to go break, come back with calls here, and then into overdrive, probably. We're sitting here looking at this. I mean, I just want to point out that they claim they're the ones trying to save the Earth. They're the ones that are damaging. Absolutely. The genetic engineering. I mean, look at that. Well, you're looking at the dictionary under hypocrisy, and you find government officials. I mean, there it is. They, they, uh, they're in the pocket of the vested interest, which means the oil company. We're going to take questions, but you were the longtime Fort Worth Star Telegram head police reporter. And, and I'm, I'm going to get your take on how police have changed when we come back with Jim Mars. I'm Alex Jones. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're going to get it. Pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review, and more coming in the month of June to the Info War. And please spread the word about the broadcast. Our goal is to reach more people. Our goal is to have a new enlightenment, a new renaissance. 
and you are the key to that. You're not part of that. You are the resistance. You are the heart of that. Jim Mars, I want to go to calls. I don't want to hog you. We'll probably do some overdrive here, commercial free for internet only listeners here in about 30 minutes when the main transmission ends. But I wanted to ask you uh, to repeat what you were saying off air about 30 minutes ago when I was talking about the police going wild and, you know, commandeering half of Boston and treating everybody like terrorists. And now somebody shot fireworks off. We're going to lock down a neighborhood and search your houses without warrants and ask a cop a question. They taser you or the imperiousness and how the government with its uh, Rand Corporation Domestic Stabilization Force has really federalized police. I mean, you worked for a long time. You knew Jack Ruby. I mean, you've been working since the early 60s as a crime reporter uh, in Dallas-Fort Worth at the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Give me your take on this transformation of our police. Well, unfortunately, yes, you're right. There is a tr huge transformation. Uh, back in the day, back in the early 60s when I started uh, I was the police reporter. I officed in the police station right across from the dispatch room. Uh, had all these monitors. You know, every time a call come in, I'd hear it, and I had a little mobile call. Talk about transparency. They'd never do that today. No, no, no. A reporter no. in the heart of the police station. Right there, and I'd go hang out in the dispatch room and talk to the dispatchers. I knew them all. They all knew me. I'd go hang out with the detectives, and in the morning, we'd all go get coffee. And, and several times, we'd be having coffee in the morning, and they'd get a call, and we got a homicide. Because, let's face it, you know, morning, that's when you find the bodies, right? Yeah. So, boom, man. I'd just run with them. Had a little snappy brim hat and a trench coat, and I'd just go with them. Had a pad and a pencil, and I'd go rock right on in, into the crime scene. Step over the blood and the mud and the bodies and everything else and just sit there make my little notes and and write down what was because happening. we were a free country more than it, i mean this it, was the old republic yes. you, you, exactly yeah, you didn't cover here's, up here's what happened and it's an evolutionary thing it wasn't anybody's fault but before long all of a sudden the radio stations decided they wanted to get in on spot news so they started carrying little portable tape recorders so now you got three or four or five reporters from radio stations with recorders they want in all right. Well, then the next thing you know, the TV stations, they were getting either. And now they want to make something up to get a story. Now there's an adversarial relationship and the globalists have played well, off that. They just they wanted to be there. OK. And the t then the TV started getting little cameras they could carry either eight millimeter, uh, 16 millimeter wind ups or vid small videos. But then they had to have a light guy and a sound guy. And the first thing you know, you had two dozen people. Well, you can't keep out one reporter and let another one in. That's not fair. So they start keeping everybody out. So then you have to stand outside the house or the business or whatever, wait for the police spokesman to come out and tell you what happened. Well, now it's now they've got that damn yellow tape and they block off blocks at a time. And, and secrecy breeds corruption. Exactly. Now you, now now eight times out of ten. They'll come and just tell you, okay, it's a barroom shooting, it's a domestic quarrel, whatever. You get the story, no big deal. But if there's a little bit of a politics to it, or if there's something a little flaky, or the feds are involved, then how do we know that we're getting the straight story? Like Michael Hastings' car yes. blowing up, or yes. Gary Webb getting shot twice in the head? And it got more and more corrupt, okay? Now, w with no more scrutiny, with nobody looking over their shoulder, then that's where the corruption comes in. Because then they can pull uh, sneakies, they can fake reports, they can plant evidence, they can do all kinds of things, and I'm not saying they do this all the time. I, I still have the highest regard for police officers because that's a it's tough, a tough job. job. It is it's tough. It's a tough job, and I honor them for doing that, but like any other job, like any other group of people. They're not above the law. You've got a, you've got a small percentage that are just cowboys, okay? They're there to, to be arrogant. They're there to push their weight around. Uh, for example, if you get stopped by a cop, how many times, if anybody listening to my voice, how many times have you ever gotten stopped and the cop says, oh, wait, I'm sorry, I think I got the wrong car, or, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. Never, never, they cannot do that. They've got to exert, uh, exert their authority, and now it's getting worse and worse because now they're all under Homeland Security. And they're well, that's the science. issue is now they're secret agents. Yeah. Now they're in top secret operations. Well, now it's security, security. and Hey, listen, is. I watched two movies with my wife last week. One was called Numbers, another was something else. But the point is, it's like now the CIA comes and kills the bad guy and goes ahead and shoots their family just because they saw. And the movie ends and that's good. I mean, they're just selling torture, secret arrest. 
What, who's going to protect us from a government? I'm surprised the government isn't more corrupt that since 1947, Jim, we have had a government that can operate in total secrecy under national security. No right. wonder it's so bad. Well, let, let me put it this way. Let, uh, here's something for people to think about. Every time we hear about some far, foreign adventurism, some military operation somewhere, some near undeclared war, who's behind it? The National Security Council. Well, the National Security Council said it was okay. They authorized... And by the way, they've gotten presidents to transfer them more power than the president and Congress. Okay, now wait. Can you tell me who exactly is the National Security Council? I do know. It's people like General Jones and folks, but the general public doesn't know that. Okay. What they don't know is, is that they bring in people as they need them, but the basic National Security Council is only four people. Yep. The president, the vice president, secretary of defense, and state. Now, wait a minute. Three of those are appointed by the president. So when we allowed them to set up this national security system... Look at Obama we, doing every once with Obamacare, and the news is like, roll call today goes, is that dictatorial? Well, well, it's a dictatorship. Well, the one person, the president, picks the National Security Council, which approves everything having to do with our fighting, and that's a dictatorship, right? It's one guy. One guy and now they want to bring... 50,000 veterans of Syria who are mainly Al-Qaeda here to America. And, and you know, they're not going to get searched. They're going to fly on private jets. But my family's going to be groped. Oh, well, I'm not even flying anymore. I'm just not doing it. I'm not going to play their game. This is so ridiculous. Well, that's okay. Now they have highway checkpoints. we got to go to calls. We're going to break here. We're going to go into overdrive, too. When the main radio show ends, infowars.com forward slash show. Free audio, free video feeds. We're going to continue for a while until we get to all of these 15 calls that are holding it, and that's it. But let's go to Mark in Oregon. You're first out of the box. Thanks for holding. You're on the air with Jim Mars. Hi, Alex and Jim. Howdy, Mark. Um, hey, Jim. Uh, Jim, I wanted to pose this question to you. Um, Alex has a fully functioning uh, social networking uh, website, planetinfowars.com, I believe. Would you agree that on planet Earth, this website is by far the greatest potential tool which can be used to allow people to organize together into national and even global protests? Sure, sure. We set up a social network about a year ago. I don't talk about it enough. It's planetinfowars.com. Millions of people use it, and there's anything you want to set up, you can do there as long as it's legal and lawful and not obscene. And it's a great place to organize and have folks meet together. And, and I, I said that in my speech last night that you were at, and, the, and, and the, uh, you just mm -hmm. given a speech before me, is that it is the people. They're going to have to lead. We can point out problems and do research all day, but from a cop on the beat to a school teacher to a doctor, they're going to have to decide with their moral decisions where they stand. Well, here's the good news. Uh, there's more of us than there are of them. But we got to get organized. If you're going to get organized, then you need us. And good people don't want to get in people's smart. business. Right. We've got to start doing that. Exactly. And I'll tell you something. I've been playing very low key and I've been playing the game for years and years and years, writing books, trying not trying to attack anybody. I stay off Facebook. I don't yell and scream at people. But I tell you what, it's time to stop playing nice because the people we're up against are not playing nice. Good. I'm ready for you to give them some Texas hell. <laughs> Can I go after them, Mars? <laughs> That's right. Turn it loose. Give them open a can. Yeah. Well, the last time I was in the airport and told them, "No, you're not going to grope me, and no, you're not going to scan me with those uh, de uh, destructive body scanners," they call the cops on me. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it, and I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not going to spy on you and sell your data to the New World Order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active. Organize. Take action. Go viral. Create. Contribute. Resist. Because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com.
Uh, Jim, I want to go right back to phone calls. But again, you were bringing up a lot of issues during the break. Uh, you were saying something about Nazi Germany, which you've written best-selling books uh, on paralleling America. Oh, absolutely. Uh, no, the only point I was going to make is that uh, uh, it, the Nazis, at the height of their power and arrogance, uh, middle of World War II, uh, they did not, and I'm sure never even contemplated, stopping Germans on the street or at a public place and saying, we're going to grope your genitals and we're going to put our hands in your pants. And, uh, and like the to, TSA. Yeah. Like, you know, that because they drag your kids away and then go get back and then grab them. And some weird guy with grease dripping off his hair does well, it. Why didn't they do that to those Germans? Because those Germans at that time would never have put up with that. But we do. Nobody we puts up with what Americans put up with. I know. And Everybody it's sad for me. At it. They laugh at us. Israel, probably one of the most security conscious countries in the whole world they don't do that they don't touch no they actually profile i know it's incredible oh one other thing too about the police the changes that i noticed when i started back in the 60s working for police if for some reason the fbi showed up they came with their hat in their hand uh would would you like us to help you we'd be glad to give you some help if you'd like and of course the local police man oh jerry hoover the fbi holy cow yeah please you know help us out now cops roll over like a dog yeah. pee on themselves well, it all happened on my watch just just over the period of about 10 years there uh, it went from hey can we help you to uh, well we're here to help to get out of the way we're with the federal government to roll out a red carpet and kiss my patoot yeah, I mean, you should have a dog rolls over and like, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, yeah. And so I think my message is to all the police officers out there and deputy sheriffs and law enforcement people. Listen, you do not have to cave in to the FBI and the Yeah, feds. stop Every groveling. They, Why yeah. do we even have states? Exactly. They are run by corrupt people. You're the people that's supposed to be protecting the public. Okay. And yeah, the federal government is, is has been totally taken over by globalists. Well, serve and protect the people. Protect us from them, okay? Jim Mars is our guest. We got to go to calls right now. Let's talk to Curtis in Tennessee. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, hello, Alex. It's Mars. Uh, Alex, I need information. Oh, I got two things to ask. Uh, information about the smart meter. You had a lady on a show about three or four weeks ago that they got the victory on the smart meter in a small town in Texas. Yes, sir. I'm pretty sure the city council and the lady here in Memphis, we like to try to get a hold of that lady to talk to her. They give her a well, yeah, trip here to educate the people here because they're talking about getting it here. Well, let me tell you this. Uh, I forget the name of the lady in Texas that's gotten it kicked out in like 30 counties last time I checked. New York Times reported it. Uh, guys, can type in for me something like Texas woman defeats smart meters. But... The big issue is, is even the Washington Post and AP just last week reported that the smart meters are going to control your refrigerator, your whole house. So that's on record. So it's not just what we're doing here in Texas. These smart meters are loaded up with other spy tech that basically jack into everything in your house and then surveil you. And that's not Alex Jones saying that. That's General Petraeus, former head of the CIA, last year at a Wired Magazine conference, bragged and said, quote, your dishwasher is washing and listening to you. That's the Wired Magazine headline, Jim. Yeah, well, uh, as I understand it, with these smart meters, uh, under the old meters, that when you turn something on, then the meter starts because you're using electricity. Under the smart meters, they kind of keep a certain level going. So the bottom line... Yeah, that's is, a whole other area. It's been proven all yeah. over the news that they double and triple bills. They rip yeah. you off with these. It's, you're, it's smart, all right. <laughs> smart at raping you. That's right. Your electric bill is going to go up, period. Plus, they're... And they're, don't believe us. Watch it happen. Yeah. Go study it for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up that angle. They, they're screwing us so many different ways mm -hmm. that I, I didn't even remember that it's been in the news that's happening. Yeah. I mean, you're talking one month after it went in in a case in Chicago in a whole neighborhood, doubling of prices. Yeah. And then people did stuff like unplug it from the house and go on a vacation, and they still got bills. Well, see, this is what I don't understand. You got the Obama administration that's pushing all this stuff like smart meters. And yet, and what it's doing is it's screwing his own uh, constituents. Well, look at Obamacare. You know, he's supposed to be there. It doubles the rates, people. doesn't cover it, written by I the know. insurance companies. I know. That, I don't understand. And yet there's so many people still supporting him. And, and yet they, they can't hey, seem that Obamacare is a huge tax on the poorest people. 
I know. Is, he's hurting. He them increased the taxes on people making twenty thousand dollars a year in this new tax increase. That's, That's right. a fact. That's right. Now, if you're making twenty thousand or less, you really can't afford a, a tax increase. Now, and he, and he flips. But it's okay because he's 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 liberal. I mean, it's, I, I know. It's, they, hey, they voted. They're all mad. Right. The Huffington Post that Bush is getting a humanitarian award from a university. <laughs> I mean, why not give him a peace prize too? Why not give Obama a hundred? Well, I, here's what I don't understand. They gave Obama a Nobel Peace Prize because he wanted peace and thought about peace. He hadn't done anything. Well, Hitler wanted right. peace. Well, wait, wait. I want peace. How come I can't get a Nobel Peace Prize? Well, I think I think Bush deserves one, and I think I think Hitler does. Give him one, That's Stalin. Right. That's right, Hitler. Genghis won. Khan. Hitler wanted peace. He wanted a piece of Czechoslovakia. He wanted a piece of <laughs> Emperor Palpatine wanted one. Thank you, caller. I hope that answers your question. Now let's go to Andrew in Pennsylvania. You're on the air. Uh, hello. Yes, extremist. Oh, hi. My phone just buzzed for a moment, but okay, uh, Jim. My question for you is, do you agree with me that every so often on his show, Alex should expose the highly significant, in-your-face, obvious fact that the moon is a giant artificial body, which you exposed in the first chapter of your book, Alien Agenda? No, I agree with you. I, I actually think it's uh, Hillary Clinton's butt up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'm not quite prepared to say this is a, a totally artificial body, but there are many, many, many strange aspects to our moon that we, we don't really even understand, none the least of which is how it got where it is. Uh, Perfectly even, placed for the Earth to have its atmosphere. Yeah, even Isaac Asimov, a famous scientist and writer, has said the moon should not be where it is, but it is. And so, uh, anyway, that kind of lays out a real dichotomy in our thinking because, as we all know, there's no such thing as aliens. Uh, Let me tell the caller, Andrew, something. Look, I'm a reptoid, 18 billion years old. <laughs> I run the moon. I'm actually the galactic commander. Oh. Stop trying to, look, look. And Obama deserves 100 peace prizes. He should have, for breakfast, little peace prizes. Just thousands of them. I mean, he should be massaged with peace prizes. Made out of chocolate. Absolutely, or, or whatever you want, <laughs> strawberries. Thank you, caller, you extremist. Let's go to Chris in Florida. Hello, Chris. Do you nominate Obama for 10,000 peace prizes? There's an inflation in them now. The more people he kills, the more Al-Qaeda he funds, the more every drop of blood, when Al-Qaeda chops a kid's head off in Syria or in Egypt, every gout of blood, he gets thousands of peace prizes. Uh, go ahead, caller. Absolutely. Inflation sucks all of us dry. No, thank you very much, Alex, for taking my call. Uh, Jim Marr is wonderful that you're on. And Alex, you just do it all right, man. You tell the truth. I'm so glad I have you listen to. Mainstream media just misses the mark so far. It's incredible. But my question for Jim, Jim, okay, I am working in the alternative energy research market. How does that market, how does my company get funded? We need a chunk of change. Well, you right make it, well, let me tell you how you do it. You make a contribution to the crime syndicate of the Chicago <laughs> Mafia or Obama, and then they're saying for a 10000 donation, you get a million back. No, no, no. Let me tell you what. I can't really tell you what to do because going out and trying to find funding, that's everybody's looking for that. Here's, But I can tell you two things not to do, okay? Number one, your first inclination is if you come up with a valid uh, alternative energy uh, device is to run, get it patented, okay? Don't do it, because when you give it to the patent office, you're giving it to the government. The government, if they see that it'll actually work, they'll uh, put it under national security, wrap it up, and you'll never see it again. Two, don't let the big companies buy it up. They're going to say, well, what a wonderful... That's project. right. Build it, let open it. source it, give it to right. everybody. That's right. In fact, I know this sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. Put it out on the internet. And then you'll be the consultant who can then help everybody set it up. Exactly, because most people, like right now, most people know how to make beer. Most people can grow tobacco, but they don't. They'll go buy it. Okay, so if you come up with a device, put it all out there. i got to let the caller go. We're going to start overdrive, internet only, infowars.com forward slash show. Briefly, Mars, tell folks about these devices you've seen, the specific generators. All you put in is water, and it right. runs your house. Right. Well, uh, I know where one's in existence. I've seen them operate. Uh, it's called a hydrogen generator. It's 
It's about the size of a coffee can, runs off of hydrogen, oxygen. Uh, okay, so theoretically what you do is you just take some water, any old water, lake water, ditch water, you run it across an electrolyzing plate, you separate the hydrogen and the oxygen, you burn that in the firing chamber with a spark plug, And turn a turbine. And, and that produces instant steam because you got water. That turns a turbine. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. You were getting into how these hydrogen generators work, start back over and then get into your friend they basically killed, Arkansas did with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, he... Um he got the idea for this thing and then built it, and uh, it actually worked. I've seen it work, uh, there, and uh, but it got people would uh, take off, and the big companies tried to come and buy it up. He wouldn't sell to them, and uh, this thing basically could uh, produce superheated steam, which could then turn a turbine, uh, produce all the electricity you want, and then when the steam condensed, you had potable water, okay, clear water. So it not only was a water purifier, but an energy generator, and it's about the size of a coffee can. And I've seen it work. It works, okay? Uh, and then, the, but the next thing you know, we were off of visiting in China, and when we got back, we found out that he had been found in his car uh, up in Denton County, and a hose ran into the tailpipe, and uh, they ruled it a suicide. And yet, I, my wife and I and all the friends, everybody knew him, nobody believes that. But how can you prove anything? Well, listen, I know people that have developed uh, products that have made hundreds of millions of dollars in medical devices and medical treatments and drugs and salves and things like that. And they say government's point blank. This is a, disrupt, a disruptive technology. If, if it doesn't play ball with the big boys, they don't allow it. Right. Or the big boys will buy it and just warehouse it. Right. I guess the analogy or the parable or the allegory would be at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, that warehouse just full of all those boxes of right. other secret things. All right, here's another one. When I was working for the newspaper, I covered this story where Western Electric, which was the R&D facility for Bell Electric, a Bell Telephone at the time, had developed, again, a little coffee can type device that was a solar collector generator. And, uh, you know, uh, every time your phone rings, it uses just a little, the, the old telephones. It took a little bit of juice to ring the bell, right? So, but over a year and with all the telephones, that was millions of dollars in electricity uh, that it was costing the phone company. So they came up with this little solar collector generator and they were going to put it on the pole, telephone poles of all the neighborhood. And they collect a little bit of sunlight energy, hold it, and then ring the telephones. It was going to save them millions, Okay. Well, the problem is, just as they got ready to patent it, somebody realized, now, wait a minute, if we put this out, somebody's going to get hold of one, they'll take it apart, they'll figure out how to make a solar collector generator, they'll make a bigger one, they can run their house and have their own independent electricity, so they shelled it. Put it back in your closet. Last, the last the night, the video's up at InfoWars.com. Raymond Teague, who was one of the head uh, Apollo engineers, you know, he's on the TV shows, the mm -hmm. photos, he's there. He said a lot off record we can't repeat. Why do they tell me this stuff? Unfortunately. But, unfortunately, <laughs> but as journalists, we wear those hats. We can't. I'm mainly a commentator, but I wear the journalist hat, so I never tell. Never kiss and tell. Learned that with the cheerleaders very quickly when I was about 15. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but the point is, is that I never kiss and tell. He, but what he did tell us is on record about when he was working at RCA in between the Apollo program Skylab, and then he went on to the shuttle program, what they admitted. Uh, tell folks about that. Oh, well, they, you know, they, they've, they've had anti-gravity, and he saw one they'd put out in the company newsletter, as I recall. And, yeah, it showed the guy and, floating and, around on it, the engineer. Said, yeah, yeah, we've developed anti-gravity, and uh, oh, I, you've got that clip, right? Aren't you going to show that? Well, it's up on the side, but the point is, it's just wild. Raymond's a real guy, I right. mean, well, and he's telling thing, us this. And this isn't just one story from one guy out of there. Uh, in, in my book, uh, The uh, Rise of Fourth Reich, I believe, I detailed how that right after World War II, there was a series of articles by William Lear, the guy invented the Learjet, and by several other very reputable people, and they were all talking about anti-gravity, and that was the next thing, and it was going to be, you know, and then it all went dark. That was the end of that, and today they have got it so suppressed that if you go talk to an aeronautical engineer and start talking about anti-gravity, he'll laugh at you and 
and run out of the room because well, they say it doesn't exist. Back in the late did, 80s, they, had it. they did the Hans and Fleischmann or whatever it was, Zero Point Energy. Oh, it was a mayonnaise jar. Turned out that test actually worked. Now, it wasn't really very feasible to transfer the power, and it didn't create a lot of power, but the point is it was a real test. Hundreds of universities have now done similar things and proven it. Right. But since that hoax happened, or they claimed it was a hoax, no coverage. Right. No coverage. Now, briefly, and then I'm going to these calls, I promise callers, get into deals. For those that don't know, it's been declassified that they made a deal for most of the Iraqi military to stand down in 1991. They made a deal in 2003 for over 90% to stand down. They were trained here in the U.S. That's on record. Saddam was CIA. That's declassified. For those that don't know, he'd gone rogue, so he was definitely an adversary, but that's how infiltrated it was. The Germans were able to take France in two weeks because, again, the majority of their general staff stood down to become the new dictators, the Vichy French. They moved from Paris to Vichy to run the whole country. That's why they stood down. It's the same thing. Deals are made. Now, what is your evidence of the whole Nazi system going underground or making a deal with the West and, and the whole rat line? Paperclip. How deep does that go? That goes way, way deep. I'm going to have to make this short and brief, but you're going to have to do your own homework. But read my uh, book, The Rise of the Fourth Reich. Basically, the story is this. We know the Germans were working on an atomic bomb, but the official history says, oh, but they weren't able, able to make one. But yes, they were. They may have even set off some tactical nukes on the Eastern Front, but uh, Stalin couldn't admit to that because he was having problems enough keeping his people in the war anyway. All right, so Germany had the atomic bomb. Whoops, they did. How come they didn't use one? Okay, very simple, because by the time they had one that was operational and that they could use, it was towards the end. The, the Russians were closing in from the east. The Allies were closing in from the west. Uh, and the key thing, a couple of key things, they did not have a reliable delivery system. They had a three-stage rocket called the New York rocket, if that'll tell you what their plan was. Uh, but it was unreliable. They didn't have a guidance system that was that adequate. They had a huge base in Norway with these six-engine bombers, and they were waiting to go on the New York mission. Which they then put in Captain America, the first episode, yeah. with the Red yeah. Skull. See, yeah. they, they take real stuff and then make it a movie. And make it a movie so that if it comes up, people go, oh, well, you just saw that in the movie. But anyway, all right, I have... I but you have, wrote about this before that came out. Oh, yeah. And I have a copy of the 1942 Luftwaffe a blast study of an atomic bomb on Manhattan Island. That's what they were doing. So why didn't they do it? Okay, simple. The war was almost over. We were closing in. Uh, if they had set off a nuclear weapon in London or Paris or New York, we, we would have devastated Germany. We would have left no stone unturned. That would have been the end of that. So what did they do? They got to the elitists. They got to the John J. McCloys and to the Allen and John Foster Dulleses and to the Rockefellers and to the Rothschilds. And they said, okay, we're going to swap you our nuclear technology uh, in exchange for immunity. And that's when we set up Operation Paperclip and we allowed thousands of unreconstructed Nazis to come into the United States and we rolled them into our military. And that's military why Oppenheimer Nazis. said the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki on record were of German providence. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, we only had enough uranium for one bomb. And we set that off at Alamogardo just to make sure it worked. And then just a few weeks to later... To make sure the Nazis weren't BSing. Yes. And then just a few weeks later, though, we had two to drop on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Where'd they come from? They came from the Germans. The Germans U-boat. Uh-huh. The U-235. Okay. Uh, it, it's but what's crazy story. is most of that's declassified. Yes, it's that, that's I, what's frustrating. I, I saw, people are watching this, thinking we're just saying this. It's like you know, there was a whole, there was a whole really pretty good little documentary on uh, on the military channel, I believe it was, about the U two thirty five and the fact that they were shipping the uh, a Messerschmitt jet and some uh, fifty barrels, uh, gold lined barrels of uranium. That was enriched uranium because you don't need gold line if it's not enriched all right so it's it's all a deal it's always a deal uh and uh, that's how we got uh, that's how we got our nuclear capability. so just like the french made a deal to capitulate to the nazis before it started the west took them in mm -hmm. and they were put over the rocketry programs over the cia they were like the golden boys well let's not forget that prior to the war 
there, uh, there was a, America was largely isolationism. In fact, there was a huge pro-German faction. In, the Bund. In the Bund. You know, Charles Lindbergh, uh, a lot of people were very supportive. Uh, Joe Kennedy, uh, they were all supportive of not of My grandfather remembered Dallas radio stations were like pro-Bund. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But see, we tend to forget that because um, the history is written by the victors. It's incredible. I mean, it is so amazing. Let's go to phone calls. Brad in Utah, you're on the air. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Uh, and uh, Glad to join you. Jim Mars and Alex Jones, I pray for you every day, Alex, you and Thank your you. family. Uh, th thanks for exposing everything you have today. The Middle East breakdown, the Muslim Brotherhood, Al-Qaeda. Uh, Thank energy, you, brother. Alternate, alternate energy. Uh, the police state, uh, I'm from Waco originally, so uh, need I say more about the police state. <laughs> I had a attorney that uh, actually quit practicing law uh, handling my case where uh, uh, some cops at the biggest nightclub there uh, had uh, had me jump by their buddies and uh, yeah kind of got the best of them uh, of those three that jumped me but uh, nonetheless uh, trooper picked me up on the way home uh, as a buddy of mine was taking me to the hospital I broke one of my wrists but uh, yeah the uh, I had a case that probably would have shut all their good time Friday and Saturday night down, but uh, yeah, I had a attorney that quit practicing law, but also had an FBI friend that said, "Let it go." <laughs> uh, yeah, so when y'all mentioned FBI and that sort of thing, at the time I didn't think he was a friend. I thought he was just no. I hear you. you know, I hear you, know. brother. It's all crazy how corrupt stuff is. I saw cops stealing drugs when I was fourteen years old, and in Dallas, then busting kids that had 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 bought drugs from their dealers. So I, I, I get it. You got a question for Jim? Yeah, you've definitely relieved my psyche. Uh, there's a lot of other people who have suffered worse than me. Uh, free energy. Uh, wanted to know, uh, Jim, these guys in Australia that uh, developed this perpetual motion machine, I've been waiting for it to come out for $5,000 a pop to run your whole household. Uh, I have a feeling somebody's, uh, you know, captured that project. Another question, and you can answer these. I'll just give you a couple of three. Uh, hydrogen uh, uh, generator. Uh, University of Missouri, these guys used to stop people on the street and say, hey, can I run an experiment on your car, I'll show you how to run on water, and they'd pop a few hoses or do something, and uh, next thing you know, they're running uh, the car off of water, just a gallon. Yeah, well, here, of here's the problem, and just like you explained, oh, I, you know, I thought this, you know, they, there's a lot of scammers who say they've got a system that'll run everything, if you just come invest, they can build it, and I appreciate your call. That's my problem. But I know they had carburetors in the 60s that got 75 miles of the gallon. I have the you know Time Magazine with the ad from General Motors in it, so I know they're suppressing things. Hell, they're trying to shut down coal, even though it's got problems because they don't control all of it. So we know that's going on. I appreciate your call. Any comments on what he said? Oh, well, uh, yeah, uh, you, you do have to be careful, and there are some scam artists out there. So when they come around saying, I'm wanting uh, money, but now if, he, if you're talking about when those students were showing how to run your car on water, uh, I think you can. Now, as far as those people in Australia, don't hold your breath, okay? You're probably never going to hear about that again. Uh, it's incredible how they shut down uh, alternative energy. But listen, putting from a certified, well-known company... Putting a windmill up at your house to power part of what you're doing, that's real. Mm -hmm. Putting in solar, just moving partially into it, that's real. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. And hydrogen can be real if they just pay attention to it. But they uh, they have put the kibosh on that. They don't want you to even think. Yeah, there's no, a lot of government saying it's looking into clean energy or new energy or alternative energy is because they know how hot it is. Right. Well, solar, there, there's drawbacks on almost every alternative energy. Uh, tidal, you know, you have to build something on the seacoast. Uh, solar, uh, you got to hope that you're going to have a lot of sunlight. Probably wouldn't work very well in Seattle. Uh, coal, you got to be somewhere where there's coal, uh, you know. But, hey, hydrogen, that's it's hydrogen, everywhere. It's everywhere. No, hydrogen's <laughs> the key. That's, the, that's the, the, the whole moral of this show, hydrogen. Hydrogen secrets. The Secrets of Hydrogen with Jim Mars. And we, if that you ran your cars on hydrogen... The get, get, of a fascist. <laughs> if, if you run your car on hydrogen, guess what your pollutant is? Oxygen.
Hey, watch it. <laughs> the, the clean coal plants put out carbon dioxide. They list that as a pollutant. They'll list oxygen as a pollutant. You come out with those hydrogen generators, they will list oxygen as a nerve agent. Well, they've, uh, they, they will list it as a chemical weapon, the, punishable by immediate execution. The EPA has already declared that uh, carbon uh, dioxide is a dangerous gas, and yet every time you exhale, you're exhaling carbon dioxide. Plants Wait breathe it. Plants and plants respirate. They operate off that in photosynthesis. All right, we got Al Gore calling in. He's mad at you. Man, <laughs> Sorry, bear, pigus. Pigus, wigus. You're on the air. Go ahead. I'm calling in about the Teapot Dome scandal, Alex. Well, welcome to the airwaves, man, Bear Pig. Good to have you here, Al Gore. Good to talk to you guys. Hey, uh, Jim, can you take us back to Dallas? If you were there in Fort Worth when, when Kennedy was assassinated, I mean, to, I'd just love to pick your brain about that. I mean, that's I was born like a month before that happened. and We'll, that's, we'll do and that, that, we'll do that on some future show, right? Is there, this is the 50th anniversary. It gets closer. Listen, no, but, 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 I mean, what was it like when it happened, though, just briefly? Well, what do you want to know? What do you mean, what is it like? Well, I, uh, good question. I mean, it's just like you were there. I mean, it, so many of us who, you know, like, it affected my whole life. It woke me up and allowed me to wake up more when 9-11 came. Because Come on, you know a you single get, gunman did it. Don't be a conspiracy there. <laughs> if, you know, if you know what they did to Kennedy, yeah. and, and it's yeah. obvious, like yeah. you say, Alex, 95% to 100, half to anybody who studies it knows it's, it's the government did I, it. I think your question may be is that, you know, didn't want people aware, and how come that it's been so... Controversial all these years, right? Let me explain this to you. People need to understand this. And the polls back me up. Right now today, well over half the people in this country detest Barack Hussein Obama. Okay? I mean, they don't like him at all. Some people even think he's the Antichrist. All right? So tomorrow, if we were suddenly told by the news that he had been assassinated, you've got half the people in this country who go, well, good, okay? Well, now multiply that feeling by a factor of 10 because it was simpler, straightforward, more honest times, and that's what happened at the Kennedy assassination. The rank-and-file average citizen thought he was cool, thought he was nice, had a beautiful wife, and loved to see the kids crawling around. He was great. They loved him, but the other half... Uh, the, and this, unfortunately, included the wealthy people and the um, the industrialists and the bankers and the military people. They hated him, and they thought he was a danger to the country. So even though they had nothing to do with his killing, it was okay by them. Yeah, the whole system played along. It was a different world back then. And one final comment, uh, Man Bear. What, yeah, what led you to write Crossfire, Jim? And, and if you ever talked to like Mark Lane's, obviously written some great books. He's right. he's awesome. I think he spearheaded a lot of the. Uh, yeah, what's the Israel connection? You were talking about that yesterday uh, in your speech, or well, also that, when we had dinner. Yeah. Talk about the Israel thing. That was another straw that broke the camel's back. Kennedy was shaking up the status quo. He was going to pull abolish us the Federal Reserve, take the troops out, get us let out black of folks vote, get us out of Vietnam. He also was balking at Israel. Uh, he wanted, he was demanding that we inspect the Demona plant to make sure they weren't making nuclear weapons. And he had already made it clear that he was not going to allow us to ship weapons grade plutonium to Israel, something they really wanted and desperately needed. So that was, that, I don't think that was the reason that he was killed, but it was uh, another one that added to... The stars the, aligned. Yes. A lot of people got yes, sick of that, it. Yeah, there was a whole series of agendas that that coalesced right there in 1963, and it was... Okay What's your bottom him. line on Kennedy? Good guy or bad guy? Uh, well... Because it looks like they killed Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> yeah, well, personally, of course, he, he was human, and uh, and uh, kind of a rounder, and you could claim that he was, you know, not a really good guy. But I think on the total, he really believed he was president of the United States, and he really believed that he was going to take some steps to try to correct the uh, injustices and imperfections in our system. Well, that put him up against all the entrenched special interests. Who were used to making the decisions. Exactly. He thought he was president, and they showed him he wasn't. All right, caller. Hope that answers the question. Mark in San Jose, California, you're on the air. Yeah, can I talk with MarkDice.com? Don't let him go. That sounded like MarkDice.com. All right, man. Like I said, we don't screen calls here on air. I don't know what to make of that, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, LBJ, Jim, uh, I have a question in regards to the USS Liberty. 
and his uh, part that he played there. Mm -hmm. Well, he got those people killed. What, what else do you need to know? He ordered to stand down to the aircraft carriers. Yeah. Yeah, because didn't he say, uh, wasn't he the one that kept talking about for reasons of national security? Well, I think, he, I think what he actually meant was reasons of my personal security. Yeah, plus the, the Israel-obsessed group, you can criticize Israel, and then they say, look, you're covering up for Israel. Because it's like part of a thing of only they expose Israel, so you can't be part of exposing it. You must be part of it because only they are exposing it. When I point out our government ordered the stand down and was involved with Israel trying to false flag that ship to blame it on Egypt as a pretext for a larger war and even the Russians, it was like uh, basically the expansion of Northwoods, but in the Middle East. Right. So there's the larger players, and they're like, no. Well, you know what? A lot of people miss this, too. Uh, the father of modern Israel is, uh, was uh, Baron Rothschild. And the, so the Rothschilds created Israel. They were the, also the people who funded communism in Russia. They're also the people who created Hitler in Germany. And they're also the people that run the United States through Wall Street. And that's why they're in charge. They're full-spectrum dominance. Exactly. They know how to set up the whole climate and then sit back as they all run against each other. Right. So don't, don't fall in the trap of thinking it's this versus them versus the Russian versus the communists versus the Zionists. It's all one big ball of wax. It's all corrupt gangsters that have studied how humans operate, manipulating us. Good question, caller. Let's go to Sohabi, I think I'm pronouncing it, in Oklahoma. You're on the air. Uh, thank you for my call. Thank you, Jim, uh, Alex. I uh, so hate, but thank you very much for taking my call. I just had a quick question for Jim Mars. 9-11, uh, the book 9-11, we're coming up on the 12th year anniversary of 9-11. Um, there's a million Muslim march in Washington, D.C., and there's been two movies released, White House Down and Olympus Has Fallen. Any false flag alert, anything like that? Yeah, they've got all uh, these movies, Jim, since you're looking quizzical, uh, where the White House is being attacked. And I think that makes it like the White House is good, the bad guys attack it, it's right. the good guys. I don't think that means there'll be an attack on the White House, though they might do something like that. I mean, they love false flags. Right. But we've so damaged the franchise of self-inflicted wounds. Well, all I'm going to say is, and you can check out my book, uh, The Terror Conspiracy Revisited, and you're going to find out that just like the bumper sticker, 9-11 was an inside job. 9-11 okay. was an inside can't job. People trust not only the executive branch, but also don't trust Congress and don't trust uh, federal judges. That's right. To make sure that we're abiding by the Constitution. That's right. Due process. Well, it's going to be a problem. Well, then well, we're going to have some problems here. Oh, really? We've got some problems. Well, well it's like John J. McCloy, uh, who was on the Warren Commission, and was quoted as saying, what we have to do is show the world that America is not just another banana republic where a conspiracy can change the government. Well, unfortunately, folks, we are a banana republic, and they did change the government. That's right. Any time you allow a globalist coup or an insider coup, everything gets corrupt from there because their own people can't stop stealing, and then the insiders on top don't want to stop their minions because they're all getting a piece of it, and just everything collapses, mm -hmm. and you go from a shining castle on the hill to sewage running down the street. And there's That's what corruption, we're turning into a gangster society. And there's only one rule of the game, and that is, don't give away the game. Don't tell anybody the game's afoot. And we're here giving the game up. And we're giving the game. We're here giving the trick up. We're yeah. here <laughs> exposing the entire Kit Kat and Caboodle. Thank you, sir. Three more calls. Jesse, Michael, and Clone. Uh, let's talk to Jesse and Tejas. You're on the air. Hey, Alex. How's it going? Good. We got Jim Mars here with us, bud. Hey, uh, well, I just had a couple of questions, I guess. Um, uh, first off, I was just wondering, whatever happened to hydrogen cars? You know, you heard all about them. You thought it was going to be the next thing, and then it just kind of... Well, it was going to be hydrogen like cells. They always put it in something yeah. that doesn't... Well, yeah, exactly. It could be hydrogen cars, but uh, they they were trying to go halfway. They were trying to do public relations and say, "Okay, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start shifting to hydrogen." But it had to be through a hydrogen cell so they can keep control over the look, cell technology. Look, this is twenty year old technology. The smartphone, at least, the B two bomber been around for twenty years before they rolled it out in eighty seven. Right. They can have this little baby access the whole world, run for hours, take photos, do the whole nine yards off, off the electricity in the wall. They are suppressing all types of stuff because once they turn loose of the energy control system in the economy, 
in the uh, microcosm that is your personal life and the larger ecosystem, it's over. And these are control freaks, so they won't do it. But as you see the world having less energy, as you see the devaluation of currency, you see rioting, murder, war expanding. Pollution. They, pollution. They hope to ride all this to victory because they think they can screw everybody and get away with it. You know, it's like there's an article right here uh, out of the London Telegraph about how the cosmetics have all these chemicals and estrogen mimickers in them. I talk about this and they attack me. I mean... Do the elite think they're going to put out a bunch of poison in the food and water and not have it blow back on their kids? I mean, even if they think they're politically immune, God is the spirit of the universe, whatever you want to call it, is not going to allow them to get away with this. You reap what you sow, man. What comes around goes around. You're not going to get away with screwing everybody. And they're not getting away with it now. They just don't understand that because they still control the mass media. The richest families, most of their kids end up in mental institutions or commit suicide. They're lucky if they got one kid out of five that learns how to tie their shoelaces. <laughs> oh, man, this is a great thing you've built. Let me tell you, this is really good. This is really working great. You're really in charge of things because you're able to screw and rob everybody. Just being able to dominate is not the main sign of leadership. Two more calls. Michael in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. How's it going, Jim? This is uh, Michael from Texas. And uh, how you doing today, Alex? I'm good. Go ahead, sir, with your question. Well, my question is this. Is I, I've been working on this uh, guy, Mike Stritsky, that you're talking about. I've been tracking him for years, and I've actually started making a film about him. We call it Stritsky Keys to the Cage, because he says we have the keys to the cage. We just don't use it. So I've been thinking, I have a question for you. If we were, to, if we were as a people, were to all together decide that the way to take the power back is to take the fuel back and started working on having electrolyzers in everybody's home. I know Honda's already developed it, uh, yep. GE. Yeah, they got things. it. They got it. If we did it, if we did it and decided we were going to do it, wouldn't that just pull the power out from underneath the power supply? Because once we drive those costs down of fuel, the, the food prices would go down, the economy would turn around, $800 billion a year going out for fuel. Yep. Oh, yeah, the we whole thing's about artificial scarcity. Well, it's just simple. We're, we're always, we've been taught since childhood that man's basic necessities are food, clothing, and shelter. And I'm here to tell you. It's no, energy. It's energy. If you have energy, you can plow and food is food. energy. If you got energy, you can make your clothes. If you got energy, you can build a house. Okay, energy's it, and hydrogen's the way to go. And thank you for calling, and thank you for absolutely caller. Look at this. Look at this, look at this so-called quarter. It. it has no silver in it now. It's a new quarter, but it's the symbol of energy. In the past, it had to have real silver in it, which was a scarce commodity, a real energy. Mm -hmm. Now it's the symbol of energy, and they get the world for it. I mean, we are run by con artists. Yeah. Stop. Look, if we just stop complying, start talking, start speaking out, start questioning, it's over. Well, and what the caller's saying, and it's absolutely true, is right now, if you wanted to make your whole house energy independent with hydrogen, you can do it, but it's going to cost you fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, and most people don't have that. But it's supply and demand. If everyone would say, I want that, then they'd start producing it. The more they produce, the little cheaper it would get. And pretty soon they get it down All right. to maybe $1,000, $2,000. Right. Stop right there. I want you to expand on that before we take these two final calls. What 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 he just said is the key to all of this. Why are the globalists waging war against the real free market? Against your vote, your ideas, real competitiveness. With their collectivism, with their austerity, saying you can't have progress, it hurts the earth. Because they're in a war to shut the economy down worldwide so you don't industrialize if you're in Africa. Or so we don't go to the next level of near free energy. Because once that happens, their monopoly is over. So they're in a race to kill the free market, to shut the economy down with a planned economy to keep you in a dark age away from discovering all this. Because if we go to the new renaissance, it's over for everything they've done. Elaborate on what you just said. This, And by the way, they're losing. They're sliding downhill. They realize it. They're losing. They're losing. They're starting to lose, Jim. Well, and that's, that's why they're losing Because if they lose this, they lose everything else. Well, that's why they're they're losing it literally and figuratively, and that's why they're militarizing the police so that they've got a, a, a bulwark against the people, you know, to try to keep them in line. It's, it's absolutely amazing. But let me tell you, folks, it's this simple. If you want news, uh, turn in... 
tune in CNN or, or ABC or whoever. But if you want to know what's really going on, then listen to Alex Jones and others like him. Well, this is history happening. All I want is a real future for my children and grandchildren, yes. just like you do. And these people running things are losers. I mean, I could go around and defraud people and run scams. I don't do that because it feels bad, because I can feel it's hurting myself. And they need to get back to their basic human instinct and stop being losers. Well, it's just like politicians. You can't, you can't trust anything they say because they have to lie or they won't get elected, okay? That's not a condemnation. These are puppets. Yeah, that, it's not a condemnation uh, personally of politicians. It's just a sad fact of life is that they can't get elected unless they lie to you, okay? So you have to watch what they do. You have to watch their track record. So let's look at the track record of these so-called globalists, as they call themselves, these world elite, okay? Just over the past hundred years, we've had two world wars. We've had a depression. We've got an inflationary depression going on now. Hundreds of civil hundreds wars. Hundreds of little civil wars. Uh, a degradation of life, a degradation of, uh, of uh, in the environment. Their track record, folks, is not good. We need to get rid of them. I agree. One final call. But this, this is a historic broadcast. It's a very important broadcast. And I hope people pay attention to what's being said here. Because the establishment is a very unhappy group of failing people who use every dirty trick to stay in control. But the dirty tricks they're using are destroying the very island they're sitting on. Let me put it this way, folks. Here, here's my final thing. If you'll stop and think about it, you'll realize that I can assure you, Alex can assure you, that we have the technology right off the shelf today to make the earth a garden spot. We could provide basic food, clothing, shelter, basic medical attention to every single living person on this planet, okay? But it's not happening, is it? In fact, if you'll stop and think about it, we don't like to know this. We don't want to think about it. But right now, while you're listening to my voice, you know that all around this world, there are literally thousands, if not millions of children. 30 million a year. Starving to death, okay? I don't want that. Alice doesn't want that. I don't think anybody listening wants that. So why is it that way? Okay, because I'm here to tell you somewhere somebody wants it that way. And we got to figure out who that is and put a stop to it. You're absolutely right. They are blocking progress because they enjoy the suffering. They enjoy suppressing humanity. They're on record saying it. And it is totally and completely disgusting that they claim they want to industrialize cleanly these other countries, but they actually block it. It is incredible. Let's take one final call. Clone in Illinois, you're our last caller tonight. Go ahead. Hello? Yes. Hello, gentlemen. It's a great honor to speak with you today. Uh, I've been a listener since about 05, Alex. I'm a prison plan uh, member, and I just started subscribing to the magazine. I'm probably getting ready to go sign up on Planet Info Wars. But I just want to ask you a big question. I, I, I just, you know, I just, historically, I think you're one of the greatest men at this particular juncture in time. And I just, I, I just want you to be very careful. And if you, if you stay alive, I think you're going to change the world. I mean, noticeably, globally. Uh, and and I, just, I just want to ask you if you will be my honorary big brother today. <laughs> big brother? Like, like in 1984? You're funny. funny. Stick to the show. <laughs> can and, you love and me, I can't Tim? Get enough. And and this is this. I feel like your show has driven me almost completely crazy. But I have a, a totally rational perspective on of a world view at the same time, and and it's so difficult to get people to to wake up. And if people know me, they know you at the same time. Well, look. And, I mean, it's easy to like unplug and 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 kind of go along with the matrix. But I want you to unplug from its propaganda. And just rediscover the world for yourself. But but God bless you, sir, and I appreciate your call. Hey, hey, clone. You know what's the worst thing about being a clone? I had a question for Jim. Yeah, go ahead. Ask your question for Jim. But what's the worst thing about being a clone? Yeah, the worst thing about being a clone. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you know what's the worst thing about being a clone? That's just that, that that's just my pseudonym for today. I know. I know. It's, so it's, I know it's, what it's, the worst it's, thing about being a clone is? And you got nobody to blame but yourself. <laughs> You're worst enemy, I understand that. No, but it does come down to that. We need to change the world. Yeah. We need to decide 
to be good people. The globalists think we're losers. They've said they think we're losers. And are we going to buy into this template they put out for us? Or are we going to change that? But what's your quick question for Jim? The people have brought this upon ourselves, I know. What's your question uh, for Jim? I saw Jim's uh, video lecture about the element monoatomic gold. And um, this, this is what some perceive as the ancient mana that uh, it's it's... Some say it's not also not even on the periodic table. Yeah, people are always look looking for, uh, you know, al alchemical things that are going to fix everything. And now with these big machines they've got with high-powered electricity, they can actually make new elements. So there's a lot of weird stuff going on. But what's your quick question? we got to end it right now. Right, and with quickening, you know, everything's exponential even with, you know, alchemical science. The JFK movie, I want to know how that came about. And possibly if, you know, if there would ever be an RFK or an MLK movie. That's a good to idea. Uh, good, good to hear from you. God bless. That, that, that's a great way to end it. All right. Let me try to make this real quick. Oliver Stone, of course, was a Vietnam veteran. He got really upset about Vietnam. He did platoon and he did on born on the 4th of July about what happened to veterans when they came back. And it all had to do that in, in, in his research and in his thinking. It finally came back to why did we get into that Vietnam War? And he realized it went back to the Kennedy assassination, and that's why he did the movie JFK. There you go. Closing comment, Jim Mars. Great job on the broadcast tonight. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, and I look forward to having you back again whenever you want to come into studio with us. Sounds good. Great job to the crew. We will now rejoin the retransmission 36 minutes into the first hour of the worldwide broadcast this Sunday. I'll be back in only, I don't know, how many hours is it? 11 hours and 5 hours. Do the math. We're talking about 16, 17 hours from now. 11 a.m. Central. I'll be back, Lord willing, here on the radio. Please pray for us and continue to get the word out. Because I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, I'm real. I'm just here trying to empower humanity, trying to take action. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. <laughs>